Oh well. I've been thinking a lot about a project I haven't picked up for the last five years or so. Um, and I think with the recent work I've been doing with JLC PCB, learning how to design circuit boards like the one I used in the Arduino Password Vault, I thought maybe this project I, I could get back to and make some improvements on it. Basically, this is a Z80 single board computer that I designed back in the 80s in college. And what was unique about it was that it doesn't, the original design didn't have any ROM or storage. It basically was a keypad connected to the Z80 and four LED displays. So we originally built it on, as you can see, the spots for two of the LEDs and the other two were up here. The keyboard was would sat right down here. Uh, there was a, this was basically the enter button here. There was a uh, mode switch where you would switch between uh, entering data to the uh, to memory or uh, running programs. So um, obviously uh, you basically wrapped all these wires around the pins and you connected them the way you wanted to. And I hope you got it right because uh, trying to debug a bad connection on this was a nightmare. Uh, never mind fixing it. But we actually did get this uh, to operate and we're well enough to demonstrate. When I moved the system to the breadboarded version, I added a microcontroller and made a couple tweaks to the design. But I'll go into a, that a lot more in future videos when we start re rebuilding the individual modules. Uh, for now, um, why don't I go ahead and turn it on and we can see that go ahead and take place. First thing you see is the LED, the two LEDs there. They look like they're displaying apes, but they're actually rapidly flashing through uh, a, a bunch of instruction codes that were just entered into RAM. So now you see HH is the code that the microcontroller prints out when it's done and the computer has control. So right now the computer has control of RAM and the data bus. And if I type something on the keypad, the Z80 is reading that uh, and uh, this button over here serves as an enter key. It's hard to see, but down here, right now the Z80 is, has printed a speed. So it's, it's basically pro prompting for the speed. And so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pretty big number. That'll basically slow it down. And now if I press enter, we'll see that it'll start counting. Um, it's actually counting on both the LCD down below and the LEDs up above. The original di design actually didn't have this LCD, but once I got it put together on the breadboards and functioning, uh, I was able to add this as an additional peripheral. There is a reset button down here. This was in the original design. If I press the, it basically reboots the computer. If I then underneath here, it's kind of hard to get to because of this uh, mask. But if I press that, what that does is gives access to the data bus and the address bus to the keypad. The, the left number is the keypad display. So, and there's no backspace or anything like that. You basically, every, it just shifts the number in. So if you make a mistake, you just, so if I, if I need to put in zero two and I put in zero four, I, there's no way to go back. I just have to start over again. I put the zero in and then I put whatever I want to put in. So if we want to see what's on an address space zero one, for instance, we put that in and over here you see there's an LED. I don't know if we'll see that when it lights up, but there's an LED right here. When that is off, it means that the number that's entered in the keypad is represented as an address. And then if I press the enter key, yeah, you see that LED turns on. Now it's data. So when I press that in, the 01 address, it shows me that there was a 21. So that is the data that's at address 01. If I want to change that, so if I change that to um, 96. So now, since that LED's on, it, that's representing data. If I put, push enter, that goes into that space. Now I can go to address space 03. Now I happen to know that at address space, there's three, at address three, there's the number three. So if I hit enter, just happen to know that from this program. It's an easy thing to remember, I guess. So you can see that's three. I'll press enter again to keep that as three. And let's go back to zero one. And that should be my 96. So we've just changed address space zero one to 96. Now, if I give control back to the Z80 at this point, the program is clearly not going to run. I have no idea what the instruction 96 will do at address space one, but I'm sure it's not going to do what the program meant to do. So I'll give control to it. And that it actually is asking for the speed. Let's give it, we'll give it something slightly faster this time. We'll give it a D9. And it's still counting. <laughs> so I don't know what that first address code did. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and make a more severe change to it. Um, it we changed address 01. Let's, let's make sure that that's still 96. It is. Uh, address 0. There's a zero, zero. Uh, let's put a 96 there as well. 96, oops, 86. Well, actually, this the light is off, so now we're looking at an address. So we'll put a zero again, whoops. See, we did get a bounce there. 
So what happened was since the light went on and off, it actually put the zero zero in as data as well. It happens that the address zero was that anyway, so it didn't do any harm. But we're, now we're at address again, so we'll press enter. Now that light's on, so let's put a 96 in there again. 96, no, B6, that's not what I want. So this is how you have to fix it. You got a nine, that's an eight. So you nine, six, nine. <laughs> can't see 96 there we go so there's the right number we'll put that in as data so now that's in it as the first two did two bytes of in the program let's see if it still runs now pass control back to the program computer and the z80 and if, i don't know if you can see this but there's total garbage on the screen now so obviously the program's not running as expected let's see if i put in a speed i'll put in ee okay i just get 76 so it clearly doesn't count anymore let's do a reset see if we get anything nope so it's done. So basically, that's a quick demonstration of how you enter data. I'm going to go ahead and reset this, make sure that the. So I, basically, by hitting the reset on the microcontroller, it reboots the microcontroller, which re re reloads the program. And now you can see it's it's running normal again. It's asked for speed. And I can put in a speed, hit enter, and it starts counting. So let's take a look at some of the Arduino microcode that does the debouncing. It, I think I'm using a, a, a Pro Mini actually as the microcontroller. So this is the code and initially it just started as debounce software. Then I realized uh, since it's sitting in the middle of the keyboard entry, uh, it had the ability to pretend to enter the, the data uh, when it boots up. So here you can see uh, I, I put in various programs and I commented out the ones that when, as I got more and more complex. The first one did a, uh, was a simple counter uh, with there are no delay loops in it. So when it runs basically the, the uh, display just looks like a couple of eights and they got more and more complicated and, and this is the one uh, the counter program that currently boots up and you can see uh, if we go to address location zero one two three and sure enough there's the three that we ran into before but just uh, to get a flavor of what it was like to use this without the microcontroller um, why don't I choose a program that uh, is demonstrable so this file contains a number of the test programs that I wrote as I was developing it yeah, so this one's got a delay, a loop. I'm assuming that this one basically will do a count in a relatively simple, easy way. Uh, it's not too long. It's only, uh, what, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14 bytes long. But uh, I'll speed this up, but you'll get a, a, a sense of what it was like to actually enter a program on this thing. So first thing we're going to do is take control from the computer and give it to the keypad. This LED is off which means that we're in address mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the address zero, zero, press enter, and there we go. We got DD displayed. That was our first byte. There are actually a ton of Z80 single board computer projects out there on YouTube or internet um, websites. What's unique about this particular version is the strictly hardware monitoring for adding or modifying memory. It was kind of inspired by the early deck mini computers that used to have a couple rows of switches, uh, one for the address and one for the data. So it, you'd literally, if it was a 16-bit address bus and a 16-bit uh, data bus, you would throw 16 switches for, to represent the address that you wanted to access. And then if you wanted to enter data, you'd throw a different 16 switches and basically manually enter data. So I actually never had to enter a program using the switches on the front of the machine. But I always thought it was a simple and elegant way of accessing the memory on a computer. Now, I was, uh, did a fair amount of talking when I was doing that, so I wasn't fully concentrating on it. So I'm not 100% sure this is actually going to run, but we'll go ahead and switch control over and see what happens. Well, <laughs> it's counting. Uh, I don't think my delay loop is working quite right. Oh, you know what? The next one has a double loop. I think what I found was this going 255 in a loop wasn't enough. So you see this one actually has a nested loop. Let's put this one in. Oh, we'll give control to the Z80, and fingers crossed, there we go. Still going pretty fast, but at least you can see that it's counting. Oh, well, yeah, you can see one of the digits is counting. Let's go ahead and try and slow it down again. So I'm going to take control, and if I'm looking at the code, uh, it looks like on line on uh, address 05, if I put a 250 in there, it's going to be 96. Or I guess it's a 150 that's there now. But if I put a 255 in there, so let's put in 05. <laughs> no, that wasn't enter. 
it again. So if I put in 0 falls, the address, that's got the 96. Let's put SF in there instead. And then give control back. Still going pretty fast. So let's put FF in the other one too, which is 9, 7. Take control. It's got a 14 in there now. That's correct. And we're going to put an FF in there. And then give control back. There we go. That's a much more relaxed count. So hopefully that'll give you an idea of what it's meant to actually program this thing. I was mostly looking to just uh, give you a flavor for this V80 single board computer uh, and start off a series, uh, hopefully uh, over the next number of months, where I'll be rebuilding this on PCBs delivered by JLC PCB. Uh, and uh, end up with a more reliable version and one that's closer to the original design philosophy that we put together back in the 80s. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.